Hi, my name is Andre Ng from House of Knives and today I'm going to give you an education about uh, sharpening stones and eliminate a lot of different uh, myths uh, about them out there. So starting from entry level, we have uh, silicone carbide stones. That's uh, the entry level, the three green ones you see in front of us here. And as you get into the higher quality ones, you have the aluminum oxide stone here with the white and the brown. And then the highest quality ones being the Japanese water stones that actually come from Japan. And we'll also talk about other materials as well, such as diamond. So <clears throat> to start with, what you're getting from a sharpening stone from when you go from a good, better, best scenario is uh, not only the different uh, grit of the materials that they come in, but also the composition of it. So starting at the silicone carbide, it is the hardest material out of the three stones that you see in front of us here. And that's actually not a good thing. You want it hard, but you also want the stone to be soft enough that it actually wears away. And thus, as it wears away, it uh, reflects and exposes more polishing uh, properties of the stone. So from silicone carbide, we then go to aluminum oxide. And this one, in particular one, comes in a great grit of 1,000, 3,000. But although it's a higher grit than the silicone carbide ones, it actually is a little bit softer and not as brittle. When you get into the highest quality ones, the Japanese, famous Japanese water stones actually are a natural stone from Japan. This particular one is a 300, 1,000 grit, but you can get them all the way up to about 20,000 grit. And these are uh, much more expensive than the synthetic stones but for anyone who does a lot of specialized tools, there's nothing else like it. So let's talk a little bit about the grits of the stones. So basically if you think about stones like sandpaper, um, they'll come anywhere from about 100 grit all the way up to, as I said, 20,000 grit. The lower the number, the coarser the stone is, and in general, the softer the stone is because it wears away. And in general, you'll want to use a coarser stone on knives that are very dull or badly worn. And then you want to finish off at the uh, higher grit here, such as the 1000, to give you a really fine, polished, honed edge. Because basically, the better polished edge you have on it, the less resistance as you're cutting through your food and materials. We also have very popular diamond uh, as well. So diamonds, uh, as an abrasive, are the most efficient sharpener you can get in the world. And these are not made from like jewelry diamonds, but industrial diamonds. This particular one is uh, called a quad stone. It's very popular because it has the four different grits here shown with the 150, 300, 600 and 1000 grit. So it gives you the most versatile and the most options available for sharpening your dull chisels or your knives. And diamond stones can be used with water or they can be used dry. And that's a, a very common question that we get <clears throat> in terms of how do you lubricate a stone. So all good synthetic stones uh, you just utilize water. You don't want to use oil with them. You can use oil with them, but it's actually not as beneficial as water. And one of the downfalls of using oil, if you were to accidentally use it, you want to stay with oil. You can't mix oil and water once you start utilizing it with a stone. Now, the higher quality Japanese water stones, these you only use in water and you'll soak them for upwards of about an hour, depending on the specifications by the manufacturer. Where the synthetic stones here, you can soak them literally just minutes before use. Uh, and then another very common question is size. So as you see in front of us here, we have stone from uh, 4 inches all the way up to 7 inches. And the general rule of thumb is you want to have the stone as close to the le longest length of knife that you're going to be sharpening with uh, to fit. So in this situation, we have an 8 inch chef's knife we're going to be sharpening. So any of these stones here in the 7 inch range would be more than adequate. Ideally, you could have it longer would be better, but uh, seven inches is adequate. Now that we talk about uh, sharpening, this one's been soaking here for a few minutes. And this is our uh, silicone carbide stone here with a 400, 1000. So the key with any sharpening, whether it be a maintenance device or a stone, it's all about uh, number one, angle, correct angle, and secondary to that is technique. So as a lot of you guys may or may not know, whether you're utilizing a steel or a stone, if you know that as your 90 degrees, your knife to your stone, half of that gives you about 45, half of that again gives you that 22 and a half degrees. Depending on the usage of the knife and uh, the durability of the edge you want on it, you're going to be sharpening or honing your knives anywhere from 15 to 20 degrees, I would say. So the general rule of thumb is the higher the angle, the more durable your edge is, the lower the angle, the sharper it is, but less durable it is. So it's a give and take depending on the type of cutlery and, and uh, what your personal preference is. So when utilizing a sharpening stone, it's all about technique and angle. So if you've got that 
proper angle on there, and in this case here I'm going to use about 20 degrees, I'm going to place my knife at the edge of the stone here, and basically I want to put my fingers across the blade so I get even pressure. And as I work across the stone, I cut into the stone and finish at the tip. Very simple. And the key is consistent pressure across the blade, and then you would alternate this, the blade to do the other side as well. And that's really the key and the challenge when you're doing any type of sharpening to maintain that consistent angle on both sides. So one of the greatest uh, old tricks that you can use to help uh, judge the angle that you're sharpening at is uh, just take a, a nice big black marker here and what you want to do is score the edge of your knife here, right along the actual cutting edge. What that's going to allow me to do is judge the angle that I'm sharpening at to, to give me an indication whether I'm holding the knife too low or too high in the angle. I'm going to go about 20 degrees on this one. But if I happen to get it too low and I pull it across my stone, I'm going to show you what's going to happen here. As you uh, may see here on the blade, a lot of the steel has been worn away quite high up onto the felt. Whereas if I have the correct angle, at that little 20 degrees, right, you'll see that uh, the wear is much lower on the blade here. So that's the correct angle. I know my angle is correct because it's worn away the felt there. Whereas if I look on the back side here, it's not as consistent, right? And it also gives me a good indication along the full length of the blade, right from the tip right to the heel, how the sharpening has worn away. So when you continue on at the correct angle, depending on the sharpness or dullness of your knife, if you will, uh, that would dictate which grit you're going to start with. In this case here I've chosen the 1000 because this knife is pretty sharp so I'm just basically just giving it a touch up. And if it's pretty sharp already then you can alternate your strokes from one side to another. If it was in really bad shape and dull then I would just work one side at a time before I go to alternating strokes. And basically again depending on the quality of the steel of your knife and the grit of the stone it can take anywhere from six to maybe even uh, 24 strokes on, on each side. So again, Paramount uh, Sharp Knife is a safe knife and thanks for watching today.